Hey guys, it's Sharon from Digital Nomad Quest, and today we're gonna go over our new YouTube studio setup. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, welcome. I'm all about teaching you how to build passive income, become financially free, and design your best life. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of my latest videos. Now, before we begin, I wanna thank Epidemic Sound for sponsoring today's video. I remember when I was on this YouTube panel I hosted a few months back, they actually talked about Epidemic Sound as the top place to find royalty-free music for your YouTube videos. Basically, if if you find random music online claiming to be royalty free, you have no idea if that's even true. And you have no idea if they're gonna suddenly copyright the music so that it's gonna make your YouTube video demonetized or taken down. That's why Epidemic Sound is so great. This is not gonna happen to you if you use their services. They make royalty free music simple through monthly subscriptions, which give you full access to professionally produced high quality tracks. They have over 35,000 tracks and 90,000 sound effects, which can be used for your videos, your streaming, your podcast, your social media, and even your commercial projects. They even have transition sounds like whooshes or clicks that you can actually drop into your videos when you're editing your content. And the team at Epidemic Sound was awesome enough to give my viewers a discount code called Summer Sharon. So go ahead and check it out in the link in the description below. All right, so now let's talk about our YouTube studio setup. So I actually created a video back in the past about our previous setup. And we've made some upgrades since, and I kind of want to talk about the new updates. And basically it is pretty important to have a nice YouTube studio set up when you're creating this type of content. When you're just starting out on YouTube, however, you don't need all this equipment. You could just start with your phone, but as you start seeing traction, it actually does help when you have a lot of these components afterwards to improve the watch time of your videos. So I've found that as we've been upgrading, I've seen more views and more watch time for the videos. However, I don't think it's required when you're just starting out. I think it can be overwhelming figuring out what to get. So if you're just, brand new, you don't need to grab all this equipment. But if you are interested, I'm gonna link everything below so that you can grab any of this equipment that you find interesting to you. In the previous video, we did have the current camera I'm using right now, but we didn't have a lot of this lighting equipment. So I didn't really know how to design a studio space until I watched Kevin's Dream Studio course. And after I took that, I bought a bunch of these lights and I changed a lot of the things in my studio. You guys have probably noticed that you guys have probably seen some of my videos where I have the backlight with the color, some new stuff in the back to decorate and I'm gonna talk all about that in this video. So before we talk about lighting, let's talk about the camera equipment we're currently using. So since the previous video, I'm still using the same camera. I am using the Sony a6500. As you can see, it's pretty high quality. I really like it. And it's also really important to get a solid lens. So we have two lenses that we use all the time. We use the Sigma 16 millimeter as well as the Sigma 30 millimeter. They're both f1.4. So if you want that nice bokeh effect, which is basically like the blurry background effect, you can definitely get that with this lens. The one I'm currently using right now is a 16 millimeter, so it has a wider angle than 30 millimeter. The 30 millimeter is a little bit closer to me so that I have to kind of push it back a little further and it gets less of the view of the space. So it kind of depends what look you're going for. So sometimes I alternate. So with this lens, I'm gonna get more of the background of the computer table as well as the lights and everything like that. So that's kind of what I wanted to get in this shot today so I can show you guys more of the studio. And for the microphone, I'm actually currently using the Blue Yeti microphone, but I also sometimes use the FiFi microphone that I've talked about in the previous video. It's the FiFi K678. The thing about that microphone, I normally put it on this table, but every time I slam on the table, you can hear it. So usually you should put it on that stand so that you don't have that interference and that sound in the video. So that's why I'm currently using the Blue Yeti, which is attached to the stand. So I'm not gonna be touching the table right now and it, you know, it would pick up on that. So both the Five Fine and the Blue Yeti are high quality mics that you guys might wanna check out. Now jumping back a little bit to the lighting. So in the past we had these umbrella lights. It wasn't the best lighting. And now we've gotten a lot more understanding of what lighting you actually should use. So first you should get a big key light. So a key light lights your face in the shot. It's the primary light that determines 80% of your shot. The rest of the lights I'm gonna talk about basically support the key light, but this is like the main light that you're gonna use. And with the key light, you kind of position it to either the right side or the left side, like a little bit off center, and then the camera's centered, obviously. It's basically a large 
diffused light source and the light comes from a big surface area. The reason is that if the key light is too specific onto your face, it's gonna have these harsh shadows. So you kind of want that diffused large surface area lighting. So get a key light that has a large soft box that scatters light in all directions. The key light that I'm currently using is the GVM 100 watt photography lights. And next we have the side light. It's on the side of me. It's on the left side actually. So the way it works is kind of helps to pop me out of the background a little bit more. It allows for less shadow on my face, right? So I have this key light on the right side of me. And then if I had it too harsh on me, it's going to have more shadows that I might want to get rid of. So this makes it a little softer with the side light to make it so that it kind of outlines my face a little bit more. So instead of being the most prominent light, it really just brings out that outline. Now with the side light, I'm basically using this three pack GVM lights. It's all GVM lighting. And as you guys can notice in the back, I do have a blue light that is currently on right now. And it's one of the GVM lights because it's a three pack. So we have one shining upwards and we have one shining from the side. And with these lights, you can change the coloring of it. So it makes it really cool. Currently I have the blue lighting cause I feel like it gives a little bit more of a tech vibe, a little bit more of a streaming vibe, I guess. So I kind of wanted to bring that in this video right here, but sometimes we turn off that light cause it does look pretty good without that light on. So it just really depends on the shot we want to get. Now we also have these practical lights in the back. Practical lights are basically lights that serve as decoration. So you can even say that this monitor right now is kind of like a practical light as well. But the ones that I'm talking about that we did purchase were these two lights in the back as you can see but we recently did another update of the studio where we bought this l-shaped computer desk which i'll talk about later so it does kind of cover one of the practical lights right now but i think that with the computer monitor as well as the blue light and sometimes that light up top i think that's enough for the practical lights but the way i see it is i can move the camera to different angles of me and i can decide how i want the studio set up if i want the camera here i'm going to get a totally different look or if i want to use the 30 millimeter i'll get a zoomed in look of my face and not get as many elements in the back so it just kind of depends on the shot that you want but basically with these new tables and things like that that we've added we can get different types of shots for each video another thing we did was we actually used black film covering over the windows because what I found was as I started filming sometimes I would film during the day and I realized that the natural light was conflicting with some of the lights that we purchased so it made the shot look totally different in some videos than others and I realized that we needed more consistency in the videos and that we didn't want the natural light to kind of affect the shot. So I would always shoot during the nighttime and that made it kind of inconvenient for me. But now that we have that film over the windows, it makes it so I don't have to worry too much about that messing up the shot or what it looks like. Now we have consistent lighting all the time without that natural light. But I do have to argue that natural light does look really good in shots. If you don't want to use any of these other lights at all, you don't have to because I used to film with just natural lighting and that looks good as well. So let's talk also about the new arrangement. So in the past, our computer desks were actually in the back. So we had two black desks in the back and normally that's supposed to be kind of our office studio setup. And then we also have our YouTube studio setup. And that made it kind of weird for me. I wouldn't come downstairs actually because the way our room is right now, the lighting is only really lighting up the middle of this room. And in the back over here, it's kind of dark, it's kind of dim, and it made me not want to go there. So a lot of times I wouldn't even use this office studio space for just working. So I realized I wanted to combine my YouTube studio setup with kind of like my office everyday setup as well as possibly a streaming setup. So we've basically created a space where we can do all three of those things, right? So number one, the YouTube studio setup is this way. The streaming studio setup is basically here. I would sit in this desk and I would basically probably talk to a different camera from this side and then stream my screen as well. And then lastly, I would just do everyday work here now and it actually is really efficient. So what I did was I got this L-shaped computer desk. I'm gonna link it down below as well. I've been able to kind of do a lot of my work there. I really like the look as well. So we've been trying to keep this space cleaner so that it looks really good for these types of videos. It makes it so that I wanna work there as well. As well as this brown desk right here, this one allows me to put my external monitor here so I can see what I look like with the film. So right now the Sony X6500 doesn't have a pop-up screen where I can see what I look like. So the way I do it is I connect it to an external monitor so I can see what it looks like right here. This desk is the QEQE -QE Study computer desk, 55 inch, and it's available on Amazon. Like I'm going to link everything below. So this has been great because I can put my laptop here, I link it to my microphone, and then I record the audio 
have it on here as well as the video file here. So I actually do record separately the video and the audio. I can show you guys a little bit of my stream setup as well. We got the Elgato stream deck. So if I wanna start streaming more, I can actually use this to switch to different views. You can actually link different web pages to different buttons on the Elgato stream deck. You can even link MP3 files. So if you want some transition sounds, I like, like you can actually press the button and then it will actually activate that. So the stream deck is super essential if you want to start streaming. And normally I would use OBS to stream my screen as well as me in the picture. But then with the touch of a button on the stream deck, I can switch it back to the camera mode just on me. So it makes it really convenient that way. And this is not completely related. This is more about the streaming setup, but I also use the SkyTech Archangel for my gaming and just as my work computer. It's a really solid desktop, so it allows me to do a lot of work there on that white computer desk. And I have dual monitors. One is vertical and one is horizontal, so I can see really easily what I need to and I can drag it between the two monitors to make it really easy for me to work. Lastly, aside from the practical lights in the back, we also added a lot of little trinkets a lot of plants and things like that. And it really adds a lot to the background. It probably shows a little bit more on other videos of ours, but like basically those practical lights will shine its light on some of the things like plants and things like that. And it gives more depth in the background by creating different lights on different furniture with different outlines and stuff like that from the lighting. So it makes it really pop, I think, over just having a bland background in the back. A lot of people have asked actually this brick wall thing and how they could get it. This is actually just for some reason in this room. So basically this room I'm in is actually a garage converted into a room. And it for some reason has this brick thing here. So it's not something I bought and put on in the back, just FYI. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode on basically breaking down everything we use for our YouTube studio setup. Now it just makes it so easy for me to do my everyday work as well as for YouTube and if I want to stream I can do that as well like everything we've done lately has made it so I've spent a lot more time in this room because I can get a lot of my work done here so I hope you guys enjoy this episode again if you guys like this video make sure to comment below let me know if the studio looks good or not if you guys have any feedback on how we can improve it make sure to smash the like button subscribe hit the bell button to be notified of my latest videos and I'll see you guys in the next one